Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Plano Mayor Harry Ross Lear. On behalf of the PISD, I appreciate each and every one of you being here today. First and foremost, I'd like to start today's briefing by saying that Plano is a wel welcoming, diverse, and inclusive community. And there's no place for bullying, hate, or intolerance in our community, period. When issues like what occurred at Haggard Middle School arise, it presents an opportunity, an opportunity for constructive dialogue within our city to insist on accountability for those involved. Today, I'm here in support of both our student and our school district to ensure that the best outcome results from this sad and an inexcusable action that were directed towards him. As a parent, I was appalled at what I saw within the video that, that was obtained. And I believe it's important we shine a spotlight on this type of abhorrent behavior because the resulting dialogue is how we can work together to end bullying and racial abuse in our school and certainly in our community. As I'm sure most of you know, I can't go into specific details of our investigation, but I did just kind of want to give you an update of, of where we are. So on March the 2nd, on March the 2nd, the mother of a Haggard Middle School student uh, approached our SRO, our school resource officer, and talked about events that had happened on February the 12th, uh, 12th 13th, and possibly the 14th during a sleepover at another residence uh, in, in Plano. Uh, the, the school resource officer determined that there could be potentially criminal offenses that had occurred at that event, so he immediately con uh, launched a preliminary investigation into those events. Uh, but on the 4th of uh, March, a school resource, a uh, ju juvenile detective was assigned to that case and took over that investigation from the, the uh, school resource officer and she began to immediately begin her investigation and, and uh, interviews of subjects. On the 5th of March, the victim in this case was taken to the Children's Advocacy Center for Collin County. He was given what's called a forensic interview. Uh, those are specialists who deal with children who have undergone trauma, and, uh, and the mom was also interviewed there. Children's Advocacy Center also offered some services, psychological services and other things, and they will be following up with the, with the victim in the event that uh, they have problems later. So, uh, the, in, in, and while this initial investigation was going on, we discovered via social media that uh, the mother had posted about some other events that may have happened uh, to, the, to our young victim, and so, the detectives were instructed to make sure they not only look at the events that happened on February the 12th, 13th, and 14th, but also any other um, incidents that the victim may have brought up uh, that may have come up during school or after school, you know, involving any of his classmates. So the police department is aggressively investigating this. We're working with the mother, mother to provide all types of victim services uh, that we can, and uh, we have already We've already provided Children's Protective Services, CPS, with a referral on this case uh, uh, because of some of the things that we've come across. And those are the, the details that I wanted to give you guys an update. Good afternoon. I'm Sarah Bonter. I'm the superintendent of the Plano Independent School District. Thank you all for being here today. Please bear with me as I read from my notes. Uh, I want to make sure that I cover everything that needs to be said, and I want to get it right. First and foremost, I want to be very clear. Bullying, harassment, threats, and acts of racism against Plano ISD students are abhorrent and will not be tolerated. There is nothing okay about harassment. There is nothing okay about bullying. And there is nothing okay about any act of racism whether it's in our community, in our schools, in our neighborhoods. It is not okay. As superintendent, I hurt for this child and what he has gone through and his family. This incident happened to one of our students who attends one of our schools who lives in our community. 
Although the acts that were shown in this video that has gone viral, viral was hurtful to one of our students, it is absolutely unacceptable whether it happens on campus or off campus. And I want to assure everyone that I am doing everything in my power to ensure that this situation is addressed appropriately and swiftly. While the investigation is ongoing, the investigating entities are working diligently together to gather all information as quickly and as thoroughly as possible so that we can take appropriate action. Additionally, the chief, chief of police, Chief Drain and I, met with the mother, uh, Ms. Smith, today, uh, and we had a very productive conversation. And we were very thankful for her willingness to come in and let me hear firsthand about her experiences and the experiences of her child. This week, I also authorized and initiated an additional investigation surrounding the allegations of bullying prior to this year. The district will utilize an independent third party for this investigation. I want our response to demonstrate the degree of care and concern we feel for this situation and all instances of racism or bullying now, in the past, or in the future. We do care. If there are weaknesses in our systems or processes, I want to know. I want to know because we must do better when we know. We stand here today united. United as a community that does not condone this type of hurt. We have the opportunity to heal and grow together in our schools, in our homes, and in our community. As the superintendent of Plano ISD, I want to tell you that we are listening and we hear you and we will continue to be at the table having a seat in the solutions of the collective work within this community. It is too important and our students need for this to happen. We expect the district's inquiry on the most recent incident to be concluded sometime next week. We will also be continuing to coordinate our investigation with the police investigation as that has an impact on the completion of our own. The independent investigation of the 2019 concerns may take longer since we are acquiring outside investigators, but we will proceed as swiftly as possible in that investigation. Students are at the heart of what we do. Our job is to educate students but it is also our job to protect them when they are in our care. Our parents and children need to know that our schools are safe. In closing, I'm very thankful for your attendance here today, and we look forward to providing uh, updates on these matters in the days ahead, and we look forward to the opportunity to come together as a school district with our community in working to move forward so that we learn from this event and events like this to do better for students and families. And you, you mentioned your job is to protect children. So how did it make you feel today to hear that there were assertions that this conduct against this child and others go back at least a year, if not longer? And what does it say about your ability to protect children if those such incidents that were, according to the mother, motivated by race happened over a year long period? Certainly, I feel deeply concerned, and I'm not going to say uh, that I that I don't care about. This is extremely concerning to me. You know, we have procedures in place. There are laws in place that we are required to follow. And it, you know, listening to the mother, I've had the opportunity to hear firsthand about the previous instances, um, and that really is the reason for the external investigation so that I do, as a superintendent, have a very clear understanding uh, of what, where the concerns might lie so that we can continue to address and improve systems, processes, uh, actions that we would need to take to further uh, enhance the safety and care of the students in our schools. Chief Drain, may I please ask you, sir, uh, because this has uh, been 
the second incident in just a few weeks involving a black child, this one being 13, the previous one, sorry, that we have not heard from you about, uh, publicly at least, uh, an 18 year old who was stopped and he says harassed by police for being black. Um, some people, sir, are asking what the hell is going on in Plano? What do you say? Well, I, you know, I can't talk about the, the, the arrest situation that you talked about at this particular press conference. This one is specifically to deal with the incident that happened with the Haggard Middle School student. And I don't think that there is a connection between those two events. And I think, we, and, and I, I don't have any, any words I can say that would, could connect those two. I mean, Plano is a city of almost 300,000 people and things are going to happen. And I, I don't think two incidents is in itself a trend that, that, that I'm ready to speak on and, and acknowledge that. Chief, Ms. Bonser. Uh, the family has uh, called for this to be investigated as a hate crime. Do you feel that there is evidence that suggests that is a way it should be pursued? And, and I guess what is your department doing uh, well, first off, uh, what the what the uh, the family and their spokesman asked for was that this be investigated as a federal hate crime, and I did meet I did speak with the the uh, FBI's uh, special agent in charge of the Dallas field office, Matt DiSorno, and Matt did speak with his um, civil rights division. Uh, the, the the challenge for something like that at the federal level is so far everybody that we have we are dealing with are juveniles, and there's just no provisions for the FBI to get involved in cases involving juveniles. Now, under state law, there are provisions where we can, there is not a specific crime itself that that's a hate crime. You commit other offenses, and then if it, can, if it can be shown that the reason you did it was because of someone's race, religion, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender, then we can apply that provision. And so once the person is convicted, then there is an enhancement to the punishment. It raises it up one level. And we are looking at that in regards to this investigation for sure. Mr. Bosner, yes, uh, the family tells us there are hundreds of emails that they received in the last week uh, of other incidents involving other students, racially motivated attacks, bullying, you name it. Um, is the district looking into those other claims? And also, who is this third party and what are their qualifications? So, I'll First question first. Uh, so as far as any other allegations to be looked into, um, we have the emails of those as well. And so those are being turned over and reviewed for investigation. And every incident that comes in, uh, we, we, we do investigate. So yes to that. Um, on the independent investigator, uh, we, uh, we're finalizing the details of that contract now. So I'm, I'm not uh, prepared to give you the details of that. However, at a future date, uh, I'll be happy to share that when, when we have those details finalized. Ms. Bonser. Thank you. Ms. Bonser, um, so if these um, investigations corroborate the allegations being levied um, by the student and his family, what restitution is the district um, prepared to offer to that family and the student? It's a little premature for us to, to get to that determination at this point. Right now, we're still in the investigation phase. And so uh, at the end of that and, and, and working with the, the process and the family and there will be, um, there are legal pro processes that, that go through before you get to a restitutional phase, if that's what you're asking about financial or some other. In the meantime, we are working with the family, uh, even today, on serving the students, uh, serving her child in our schools, um, providing services and supports to her to continue his education and to take care of his social and emotional health. Ms. Bonson, uh, the family says that they brought concerns and previously reported time after time to personnel at Tiger, including a coach um, who, um, according to the family, told the young boy that boys will be boys and he can't do anything. Have, have you taken action with the school-based staff about the way they've handled all of this? Uh, have there been personnel changes? So I. We're still evaluating all of the information that we have been pre presented with. And while I cannot share specific personnel, the law prohibits me from providing personnel information of that nature, action. Um, I will tell you, we have the investiga investigation ongoing on, their, on those other offenses. And that is the reason that we have hired the independent uh, investigation into previous allegations so that we have a clear understanding of of what, what happened and what appropriate actions we need to be taking moving forward.
Ms. Bosner, we received a, an email from a teacher at Haggard Middle School who says, after all of this is done, Haggard Middle School is gonna be made the scapegoat when it's really an issue, ma'am, with a, your school district as a whole, um, specifically with the behavior management plan, um, that it makes it practically impossible for the schools in the district to kind of go through a bunch of loopholes, they say, just to get the attention of the district. How do you respond? Well, I would respond that, that the review of this situation and the, uh, if the, the actions that we will take moving forward will address processes, systems, looking for weaknesses to make sure our, our process and procedures are responsive. Um, no one is looking uh, for one school or we want all of our schools to be treating students with respect and care and, and to eradicate bullying and harassment to the greatest degree we possibly can within our school system. Uh, and if we need to make changes uh, in order for that to happen, we will absolutely do that. But you don't make changes for one school. You would make changes that affect all schools. And, and we're, a, we're a school system. So um, we would make sure that any changes that we made would be implemented district-wide. What concerns do you have, ma'am, as the leadership of this district to now see these hundreds, as we heard today, of emails and that direct uh, dialogue with that mother of this particular child to suggest that there is a climate of children being mistreated based on their skin color that you heard from that parent today and uh, presumably from these other emails. How's it, what does it say to you about the climate of this school system right here? students and families are telling us about their experience it is our responsibility to be listening and then it is our responsibility to be examining and investigating what is happening and then working towards improving our systems so that students and families feel safe in our schools and so it's I said it at the very beginning and I would repeat it again. You know, there is no place for bullying, harassment, and acts of racism in schools or anywhere. And so we will continue to persist in improving any systems, processes, procedures, actions, education, training uh, that need to happen to, to move our school district forward. And uh, I feel strongly committed to that. Um, you know, this this Smith and, and Samarian, you know, they are hurting. And they, what we saw, what you saw, what we all saw, is inexcusable. It's inexcusable. And we, we will all have to do our part, the school district and the community and the families coming together to say no more no more this is not okay i said that i'll say it again it's not okay that that child should never have had to experience that ever and it's and it's our job to do some to do something together about this just so i'm clear sure. when when did sure. your office ma'am receive the so the mom came forward is it to the school that parents come forward to and then when exactly did your office become aware of these allegations and what did you do first? So, uh, the school district became aware of the allegations as Chief Drain stated on Tuesday, March 2nd. Um, the, the campus initiated an investigation that day. Um, and so the campus proceeded to then uh, follow the protocols for investigation uh, at the campus level um, and then our office became aware of it later in the week <laughs> uh, I, I have a hard time just recalling a specific date um, probably Thursday or, or Friday um, and then uh, we began outreach to the family as well um, and then I, I issued a personal invitation to mom for the meeting today but, but you, you're saying that you did not you did not find out until Thursday or Friday but uh, you your know, district I, did? I, I'd like to just say, if we need to provide that timeline through public information, I'll be happy to do that. 
but I'm standing here. I know the day the campus learned of it, they initiated the campus investigation the very day. I'll have to go back and look at when my official okay. notification I was. I just want to know the protocol, ma'am. Like, is the superintendent, the leader of the school district, not told immediately of some an allegation like this, or no? I mean, if that's not, if that's not the protocol, then just let us know. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be the protocol. Okay. When it's brought to the campus, they initiate the campus level investigation, and, and that is what was happening. Okay. And then by the time it was more publicly known, uh, they were just at the beginning of their investigation. Okay. So how many cases are under investigation, if you haven't mentioned that number? Of, of this situation? Well, of, of children or, or people of color who are saying we've been picked on because of our color, or in a case I heard about because of some child on the autistic spectrum. I do not have that number available to, available to me at this time, sir. I think we have, yeah, I think we have one more question, one more question. Ms. Bonds, can you speak to the, the nature of the threats you have received or some, from what I understand, threats that the district has received and also the family claims to also have received threats. Is there, Chief, is there, is there any protection that they're receiving at all that, that you can speak to? I'll speak, I'll speak first and, and so these are very difficult times for everyone involved in this situation and and I want to say first and foremost the safety of that of the child and the family are, are a huge concern and a priority you know it's our job as a school district to to work together to support that family and what their needs are um, at the same time the safety of the students and the family is important to me. It is important to me that the staff are safe. Regardless of the outcomes of an investigation, you know, that regardless of the decisions that would be made in the days ahead that may include discipline actions or changes in protocols, procedures, training, all the things that lie ahead for us. Even when mistakes are made or there are problems, real problems, to address. You don't solve problems of hatred and bullying and harassment by being harassed, bullied, and, and threatened with violence. And so, yes, we have received um, many threats. But, you know, I, I, don't, I can't speak for what the family situation on that is. Um, I'm, I think you would have to ask them about their situation from the school dis district's perspective. Um, we have all been threatened with physical harm and or death. Thank you. Did you have a follow-up to the board? Did that answer your question, Jen? Chief, I, know, I, know the, I don't know if the family's reached out to the police department for special security. Uh, well, in regards to threats, um, there are a lot of things that people can say that are really mean and, and hateful and can be bothersome to people, but they're not actually a criminal offense. So we have encouraged the staff to bring anything that they have that they think that might be a criminal offense, and then we are having our team vet through those. And if the person that made it is local, we are going to follow up. Uh, we had a we had a meeting with the family, as the superintendent talked to today, uh, mentioned today, and I. Uh, and I found out that the mother has also been receiving some threats. Some members of her team have been receiving some threats, and, and we gave them that same advice. So if, if they have threats that they believe are imminent, that they are concerned about, they can bring that to the police department, uh, in the case of the mom, because she lives in this, uh, she resides in the city, and then we will look at those. And if the person is local and they've made a threat that we believe is Im uh, an imminent threat that's against the law, we will file charges on them as well. Chief, but have, are y'all are y'all investigating, or was there a police report filed, and possibly somebody leaving watermelon on her doorstep? Have y'all heard of that? Have y'all have your officers gone after that to to Miss Summers' house? I have not heard of that. I spoke with Miss Summers today, and she did not mention that incident. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank